Hi, everybody. I'm Alyssa Malaspina, and welcome to the Library and Network. Sorry. Sorry. We had a difficulty. Um, and we were getting some feedback. So I'm Alyssa Malaspina. Welcome to the SD Librarian Network uh, webinar this month. This month's webinar, we're doing a recap of the SLJ Summit, Leadership Summit, where Stoney Evans, who is joining us tonight as our little like special guest, he's going to talk to us about his experience as a first time person going to SLJ, and then Kathy Schmidt, who is our communications chairperson, she is also going to be on with us to talk about it. And we have a few more people that might be jumping in as things go along, because you know how things work. Technology doesn't always work right, and things don't always go as planned. So who knows? We might have Heather Lister joining in with us, and Donna McDonald might also be stopping by to say hi to us. But if not, but we're going to get started. So um, it was such an incredible event, as always. Ever, this is my, I think, fifth SLJ Summit. And everyone, it's honestly one of my favorite of, uh, events of the year because you get to come together with a small group of librarians. They are all, you know, top leaders in the field and really dive deep and learn a lot. And then you get to hear, you always get to hear like amazing authors speak and some really powerful presentations. So to me, it's, it, and I always come learning so much come away with learning so much and then just have a great event with a lot of great people. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Stoney to sort of get to, to, you know, talk to us about it, about his experience, some of the things he loved. We're going to discuss the keynote in a little bit, which was by the amazing, incredible, oh my God, John Green. I cannot even tell you how I was just like fangirling him. I was just so excited to just be in the same room as the man. So that was just an honest, a incredible experience for me. But um, I'm going to turn it over to Stoney now. And Stoney, you can take it away. Well, thanks, Alyssa, for, so much for having me um, tonight. And my wife and I um, actually came to the, the conference. And uh, it was the first SLJ summit that we've ever attended. Um, and really, only my second national library conference to attend uh, so we were super excited when we and we we um, late and we were on the wait list and she was really excited when she got in and then I was really excited when I got in a week or so later so um, just traveling out and um, just kind of talking a little bit about why I like conferences you know this was we're starting our 10th week of school in uh, Arkansas and I'm a library media specialist teacher librarian at uh, Lakeside High School in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So 10th week of school and I know we all get so busy. The first of the year is just such a challenge you know for all teachers and administrators but, but I think especially in the the library, the school library because we're trying to you know we serve students with textbooks, we serve um, teachers with technology and it's so easy every day it, 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 it's hard to start the year, but it's easy to forget um, why we're there because we get busy with the day-to-day -day, uh, hustle and bustle and, and starting school, getting things going. And going to this conference, really, it was just good to remember and hear from people, you know, the impact um, that educators can have on students. And I know we're gonna, I don't want to give away too much about um, you know, the big author uh, keynote, but so much of, of uh, what I heard from the administrators, the students, um, authors that were there just re reminded me of the important role that we have uh, in the school library uh, serving people. And I think it's, again, it's easy to forget that. So that's why one of the reasons I like to attend conferences because it's good to have that refresher to, to get energized. I mean, I couldn't wait to get back to school and talk about some of the things that I learned and, and um, another reason why I like conferences 
because we we follow uh, you know great library leaders on on Twitter and Facebook and uh, the different groups that are online. And when you attend a conference like this, they're there in person, and it was just so cool to. Uh, this was the second time that I got to visit with with you, Alyssa, and that was just fun to sit one morning and just talk about what we're doing in our school libraries and you know just hearing you know the things that you're doing inspired me and gave me idea I remember uh, we sat around talking about some potential programs that, that we could do uh, in the makerspace area uh, that we don't have access to visit with each other face to face like that but you know uh, hardly ever so that inspired me and you know getting to meet Craig Seashells for the first time in person and Christina a Hull's wife that was just a treat uh, to, to just check hands and give those people a hug um, and just hear from them um, so those were the the big takeaways uh, of going to to the conference but just like you said it wasn't a huge conference when I went to ISTE this summer it was the second ISTE that I've been to and it was just such a massive scale uh, intimidating this was a much smaller, uh, I don't know how many people were at the conference, 250, 300 ish. Yeah, I think it's around at the total, like 250 ish uh, at that <laughs> most. So it's, it's a small, intimate group. Yeah, and even even the vendors were set up in the main room where most of the, uh, you know, the, the, the main keynotes and programming w was taking place. And you could just walk around and, and visit with with these folks and lots of free books and things that I came home with that I'm putting in kids hands and showing them um, and my wife the same thing so uh, that was wonderful and then the breakout sessions weren't all over this huge facility they were right down the hallway and you had just a few options and uh, and they were all very relevant uh, you know to what we do as, as school librarians so I don't want to talk too much but just kind of my first thoughts uh, you know as as we get into this having a conversation and reflecting on uh, the impact of the SLJ summit on us for the first time thanks that was I mean that's an awesome uh, recap of some of the things uh, Kathy you want to tell us some of your favorite things about it sure um like Stony, I've I've been to I've kind of been to all the conferences. I've been to ALA, I've been to AASL. It's been a long time, but this is my first. I've been to ISTE, obviously, quite a few times, um, and this was the first um, SLJ summit I've gotten to. I've wanted to go for a long time. It's just always a, not a good time. But this year it worked out. Um, I love that it was small. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers way back probably I think one of the last ones is about five or six probably about six or seven years ago ASL on their off years used to do kind of a like a, a small conference like this and it'd be held in one room and there'd be some speakers but breakout sessions and I just felt like this was a lot like that and you were able to really see who was there and interact with people and and uh, plus, you know, there were some great smaller sessions that I went to. And of course, John Green, I had already decided I was going um, to to the conference long before they announced John Green. But as soon as they did, I was like, Whoa! of course, my husband's like, why are you so excited? <laughs> John Green! Me too. I was like he, total fangirl. He didn't quite understand. But I thought, um, you know, I had a conversation with Heather and it was funny because she said, you know, one of my favorite things about conferences is the is the vendor hall, and you don't have that at this. So, you know, there were vendors there. Um, you know, and and I I think for this you don't go for the vendors. Like ISTE, I spend a lot of time the vendors talking to them, finding out about new things, and I did do that with at this conference also, um, but not nearly as much. I mean, there were you know. But all I, the vendors there I knew about. I, I've talked to them before. I know, you know. I sort of yeah. like this one because you get to know them a little more intimately, the vendors, than you do at, say, ISTE, where, you know, you're in the hall. Like, you don't get, you know, like, unless you really spend a lot of time, you don't get a chance to, say, talk to Mac and, like, people really for, like, a little bit of time, you know, mm -hmm. really talk to them about their products or, Junior Library Guild or one of those because it's all like there's so many people you just go to the Mac and booth you like do your thing at ISTE 
this you really can spend some time really talking to Lerner, Mackin, uh, oh God, who's there? Rosen, Gail, Follett. You really can spend some time, you know, really talking to them. And most of them, the owners of the company are there. So like, you know, Kitty and Randall were there from Mackin. You know, Britton Follett was there from Follett. Uh, you know, is it Michael? I'm, I'm going to say, I think it's Michael Rosen, but I'm, I might be wrong on his first name. You know, the head of Rosen was there. So you, these, and they want to hear from you. So they, what is, I think is also good too, is I don't know how many of you, you guys, I participated in it. I don't know if you participated in Sony or Kathy, but the, um, they do these like, um, oh God, why am I totally blanking on the name? Uh, before the conference. Focus groups. Yes, focus groups. They do focus groups before the conference starts. And so all of the companies do a focus group and they really sit down with you and they really want to learn like, hey, what do you think of this product? What can we do? What can we change? And you watch them. They're like, yeah, we took, we heard what you guys said last year and we changed things up. So, you know, they all do these focus groups, which really are a great way for us to, you know, learn more about a different product and for them to hear from us. So it's, it's been a, it's been a good thing for me, but, um, I do, you're right. I, I do think that it's nice to have a small setting. So let's talk about, I mean, the favorite part, the John Green keynote, which for people watching, we've tweeted out a link to it on the ISTE Librarian um, page. You can go and watch the entire keynote. The Google Library Journal put it online. I'm telling you, like, it's the best 45 minutes you will spend because you will leave crying, you will leave laughing, you will just leave like, oh my God, I'm in love with this man. Um, and I, for me, it was personally very touching for me because he did a very good job talking about his experiences with um, OCD and anxiety and how he's incorporated that into his new book, which I just finished reading and is so good, so good. And I highly recommend you reading it. And for me on a personal level, because I suffer from anxiety, it was very good to hear him talk about it because you don't really get to often hear, people don't actually often talk about the illness and how it affects people and, and the idea of these intrusive thoughts that come about, which he describes in the book too. And, and, he, and he talked about it in his keynote and, and he talks about sort of being in chronic pain, you know, like what it's like to be in pain and you can't vocalize it and, you know, your brain just can't, talk about it and i was like oh my god it just it was like that light bulb moment for me because i was like that's what i experience and you know like and for him to sort of put to words what sometimes i experience because i also have fibromyalgia so sometimes i'm in this chronic pain and i can't i can never vocalize it to people like they're like well what wrong with you and i'm like it hurts you don't have like there's no words that go along with it and so he was able to sort of talk about that, but he spent also a lot of time talking about how librarians are just so important to him and, and the value and the role they play in society. And he has always been a huge, you know, advocate for libraries. And it's not just because he was speaking at a library conference did he talk about this. He's been one that has been out from the beginning talking about how important libraries are and librarians. And he called us, the like fighters against the wall of fake news. I, and I, I'll, I'll try to find that quote because I put it up when at the SLJ summit and I'll tweet it out for you, but I just was blown away by him. Um, so, you know, Stoney, you want to talk a little about your thoughts from him? Sure. Um, some quotes that I have, I'm looking at my notes from things that, that he said, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this came from from his uh, keynote, because I've got this written. No one in a school building can work with as many students as teacher librarians. No one can connect teachers the way teacher librarians can. I love that. I mean, I was tweeting that out. I just love that. Um, and then you talked about this a little bit. You can't replace the classroom or the library, because I know we're starting to see more virtual schools and uh, video content uh, delivered to students. And he said, human to human work. Um, 
is really important. So that personal piece really came through in the things that he talked about during uh, his keynote. Um, and it made me realize, and it probably did uh, you guys too, but it made me realize how, you know, as he talked about the teachers and the librarian and, and that got him through those hard times uh, as, as a young person. And I came back to school that Monday and I'm looking at kids that I come into contact with and we have 1400 or so 1380 to 1400 students in our building grades 8 through 12 so we probably see close to I don't know 20 20 30 percent 20 to 30 percent of the school on any given day uh, of our student population in the library and I just wonder how many of those students are battling with these things and what how can I make sure that I am serving those students either with the materials that we have or sometimes just just saying hey nice shirt or hey I like your shoes I mean there are so many kids that may never hear that during the day uh, and, and of course John talked about how supportive his, his parents were but they they couldn't afford as I recall he said they couldn't afford uh, the uh, services that could have benefited him the most so so it was the the school faculty the librarian that that helped him through those hard times and I think that was a good thing for me here you know as I talked about it first it's it's easy to forget about those things how sometimes it just just being there and listening to someone or uh, and not saying anything or encouraging them in some way uh, can can make a huge difference because he broke down and there were tears uh, as he was reflecting on those things that's that that speaks volumes I think to uh, the just some of the ways that we can serve our students but but well, wait a minute there's adults in our building too and I came back to school looking at the administrators that are under so much stress uh, I look at the teachers that are under so much stress and sometimes I just need to remember uh, as I'm going in to, to, to serve those teachers and find out how I can serve them better sometimes I just need to sit and listen to them talk about something that's frustrating them because they don't always get to vent to somebody that understands and while I might not understand perfectly uh, you know as, as a as a support staff teacher librarian I'm, I'm somewhere in between an administrator a classroom teacher uh, I think it depends a technology facilitator we're all of those things but um, but I can still listen and and show empathy and sometimes that can build really strong relationships either with with those students or with those teachers or with those administrators and it may open doors that we've never thought of and and I got all of that out of John Green's just listening to him and reflecting on that uh, I'm just curious uh, you know Kathy how, how it impacted you but but that's that's what I have really been thinking about and then the challenge is how can I keep that focus uh, through the rest of this nine weeks into the next semester how can I remember what he said and be that for those teachers, for, for the kids, for all of the people that we serve, because I want to make that. I want I want to make an impact on a on a student, uh, how I possibly can, so that they remember the school library in the way that John, you know, described it. And how can how can we keep that going? So anyway, I'll end with the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you said it's so great, and you know, if you look at my conference program. I took all kinds of notes on everything but his speech because I, and actually I've watched it again. They put it, our, um, our uh, coordinator of media services, we have an amazing, I have a, I, I work in a very large district. Um, and so uh, we get a memo, a Monday meeting, a Monday morning sort of media memo, what's going on in the county, what's going on at um, the uh, head, you know what's going on for media specialists and they put the speech on there and um 
It was, it was just so powerful. And I love that I've gone to conferences before where an author will speak and it's basically their, like they're what they would do at an author visit with a school, not very customized, but this was, he's speaking to librarians. He was speaking to us. And like you said, I think Alyssa said, you know, he just basically said how awesome we are. And, you know, some days, especially, um, Stoney, you and I must have started school about the same time because we are in week 10, I believe, also. And, um, you know, the, the, the first of the year has gone by, you're, you're kind of, all right, well, that's done. We, we're a PBL, where I'm at a middle school. Um, and you're right, how can I look at kids differently? And then, of course, you know, um, I don't have the book in my library yet. I wanted to read it first, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I've put up there, uh, uh, what I'm reading. Jen Lagarde came out with a, a sheet that I copied and laminated and uh, a couple teachers have it and I put it up and I had a kid today come up and say, um, so what's this book? Turtles. Is it about turtles? No, it's not about turtles. Um. <laughs> But, and then I said, you know, oh, I met the author and, you know, having that conversation with kids too is so exciting. I always think. Oh, the kids love Meeting it. authors is cool. Yeah, the yeah. kids, my kids. And I love great. the book. I know that you, they're like, you met John Green? I'm like, yes. I said, I got to see him talk and it was so exciting. And yeah, I do the same thing. I have a little whiteboard that I have that I got it from Target and it's like the one that's like a speech bubble. And so I have it up like right by my desk, like on the windows, sort of the wall right by my behind my desk. And I have it up and I say, you know, Miss Malaspina is reading and for a few days there, but it wasn't too long because I literally like devoured that book. It was, you know, the, the John Green book. Um, and I and you're right, Stone, it, it, Stoney, that I was left really thinking about my students with problems like that are having issues. And. It was funny because what you were talking about hit me because I, right after that conference, was supposed to go to another conference and my son got sick, but so I couldn't go. But I, it also, but I also was worried about leaving my kids because I had a few kids that were having some issues that were needed me that like use the library as sort of a, their safe place and their their crutch and and when I told them that I was going to be leaving again so soon after having been out to go to this other conference they just they really were struggling with it and so I you know like the speech with from John helped me more to make the decision to not go to that other conference because I felt I needed to be there for those kids because they were not, it wouldn't have been, you know, they, they would have not had me around. And he talked so much about how important that was to be there for the kids when they need you. Um, that it was really powerful for me. Um, so let's do, because we're already at like, Oh my God, I don't even believe, even believe it. We're almost at eight thirty. So let's talk about like one or two other things that you found really good about the conference. I'll start first. Um, we did this, there was a breakout playground going on that Christina Holdwhite uh, put together and it was this makerspace area. And we, uh, Christina and I, Christina was in it and I was in it with Donna for most of the time because we were doing this town hall event that I thought was really good because it was like, we got to talk about um, different topics that librarians wanted to talk about. And we got, you know, some discussion about these different topics. And it was a really good, the town hall event was really great. But Christina did an amazing job in the makerspace. I took away like four or five different ideas on how to do things. She had like origami um, cranes that you can make and send to different, like to this uh, peace project that you can send your cranes to that you make. She had these postcards that were like, you could have, you can have the kids put out and it like it smiles and like, you know, communicating with other people. There were just, there was rocks for a kindness garden that you can make in your maker space and then put out, which I thought was a really another great idea. So 
she had lots of really fun stuff and ideas in, in the maker space too. And I, I love that. Those were some of the two things, you know, some of the things that I loved. Also, I have to say, and I have to give a big shout out to the kids who spoke from, I think it was Oregon, about the book American Born Chinese. And the author of American Born Ch Chinese was there too, but how they use it in their class to discuss, uh, you know, to have discussions about race, race and and issues like that in class and all of that. But these kids, oh my God, they were, they were beyond incredible. I really hope that School Library Journal does put out, and they, I think they might, because I think it was videotaped, their, their presentation too, because you just need to hear these kids speak. It was like, oh my, they, I was like, these kids are going to be president. They're going to be president. They're going to be doing these amazing things. They were beyond incredible. And so now, Stony, your turn. Well, I will. Um, I'll reiterate. the The Oregon group um, was really impressive, and what I liked about that too, um, I've had one teacher that has used the graphic novel uh, as a class novel, and it was Mouse. And I want to say she used. There are two volumes of that, and she used both. But haven't had a lot of teachers interested in using um, graphic novels, but after hearing the kids um, speak of the impact of American Born Chinese, what it had on them, and of course they connected with the author, uh, they connect with the author each year uh, in a Skype or a Hangout, um, that really inspired me, uh, and I actually talked to one of our new principal, assistant principals, at school, and he, he's been an ELA teacher for the past several years, and I told him about um, how they used this American Born Chinese as a, a racial literacy piece and how to talk about race. He was intrigued. So now that I've kind of got a green light, I'm going to pitch it to a couple of our um, 10th grade ELA teachers and just see what they think uh, because I want to take that risk with them and, and join them on a journey with that book after hearing. Uh, the the kids were so transparent, uh, and John Green was too. But hearing the kids, they shared with all of these strangers. They were so brave in sharing uh, details about how the book impacted them and situations that came from it, and conversations, and how you know there was some pushback, but then how I think it really helped everybody and see um, their self through a different lens. And I thought that was really powerful through a graphic novel. And I, it was just really, uh, really inspiring. Uh, and then they shared uh, their classroom activities, the podcast, the video clips um, on the school uh library page or it was maybe it was on the school page but anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely take that and run with it and um, and see if we can get something going the other thing that I liked uh, there was a group of administrators there was like an administrators world tour and um, there were a couple of things that really stood out to me and I want to say it was it was it a principal in Georgia I can't remember which state she was in I was really impressed with her because she talked about uh, failing forward should be the culture in the building. I loved hearing that, being away from school and, and kind of looking for things to get inspired about. Failing forward should be the culture in the building. I love that. And students should drive the learning. Teachers should facilitate. And that's the biggest shift in education currently. And as I look uh, at some of the things that I'm getting to do right now, I've been showing teachers in our building just simple VR uh, and talking about things that they can do to empower their students. And I keep hearing from stu from teachers, well, you know, I just don't know a lot about that. And I had one teacher say, but you know, I, I need to remind myself that we don't have to know everything about that. Maybe the kids can be the expert. What a great big step for that teacher. And it really reflected what that that administrator, the panel was great, but that, and I want to say it was a principal from it, from from Georgia. Oh, it's killing me. I don't remember, but uh, was it Nashville? Nashville? I don't, 
I don't recall. Maybe it was Nashville, but I, it was it was so impressive. I didn't write her name down, and I should have because she's somebody I, I need to follow. I'll go back and look at my program and see because when I see her name, I'll remember it. But um, it was just so encouraging to hear an administrator saying all those things, and of course, that's why she was on that panel at that conference because she was really really impressive. It was a middle school uh, principal. And uh, I just really enjoyed all of the things that she shared. I, I, and I'm glad that I wrote a few notes so that I can take that back and just to remember failing forward and students driving the learning. That's, that's what I walked away with from those two. And I could probably talk for 15 minutes more about, about this, but I'm, I'm going to stop because, uh, um, again, I, I, I just the, both of those sessions uh, really impacted me. And, and I can't wait to to keep going forward, as, and especially with the, the graphic novel piece. So, anyway, Kathy, curious what your takeaways are. Whoops, sorry. Um, I loved the graphic novel one, and that was one I almost left. I'm like, well, maybe I'll go bring my stuff back up to the room for a few minutes, and I'm so glad I stayed. Um, we, I'm at a middle school, so okay, um, six through eight and our eighth grade teachers actually are wanting to do the book March, which I know the year before at SLJ. Um, uh, John spoke the year before at SLJ. Oh my God. I, uh, so, I can't even, he like living legend speaking to us. I was, <laughs> uh, I, 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 it was beyond. Beyond. So we're hoping, of course, at the moment, it's it's a matter of funding because the, the books, even though they do come in paperback, are not cheap. And we're a new school, so we don't have a whole lot of extra funds built up. Um, and, of course, you know, John Lewis does live. We are not in his district, um, but uh, our the, the namesake of our school does know Congressman Lewis. So... I keep pushing them like, can we get them? Can we get them? Or, or we'll Skype with them. We'll Skype with them from Washington. So we'll see what happens. But hearing that and hearing the kids, um, I think really helped me. I went in and talked to uh, two of the eighth grade uh, humanities teachers because our, our teachers teach both social studies and language arts in one block, um, which is why this novel, because they are doing the history of Georgia and the civil rights movement. And I mean, this book is perfect um so that kind of solidified too i'm like hey you can use a graphic novel i had these you know i saw these kids speak and even at ISTE, one of my favorite things at ISTE to go to is when students come in and speak um my very first ISTE in atlanta uh like five six years ago now um my school brought a group of students and the impact on them was huge, but just seeing people ask them questions and stuff, I think seeing and hearing from students is amazing. Um, the other, um, the breakout session I went to also deals with students. Um, it was the Project Look Community. Um, Jared Amato, um, he's on Twitter, I think under Jared, J-A-R-R-E-D, Amato, A-M-A-T-O. So I connected with him on Twitter a while ago. He is a language arts teacher in the Nashville Pub at a Nashville Public Schools High School. Um, I think high poverty area is what he told me. And he started this um, basically connecting kids with current books that are awesome. Um, you know, they somehow last year they ended up Kwame Alexander came to one of their book clubs again. Another person I would like come to my school. Um, and so they've started this whole community where they have, they invite the community to come in and read the book every month. And then they do a, a book group at school. I think the, I think there's one this Friday for the book, The Hate You Give. Um, he's come up with a list of books that they're going to read every month. He's also come up with a kind of a middle school list. Um, March is on there, but I think it's on there for February, March, somewhere around there. Um, but, and he's trying to make this, what he started in his school kind of grow. And um, 
and also sort of as a model, you know, like I, he also had his librarian there with him, which was so awesome to see that collaboration between a, a passionate language arts teacher trying to get books in the hands of kids, trying to get, you know, do novel studies on current books, not, you know, he mentioned, you know, why, why do you have to do a novel study with The Outsiders, which is a fabulous book. I love that book. But why not, you know, it's 50 years old. So why not do something where it's going to be, we're going to be talking about this book 50 years from now. Um, you know, he mentioned, um, I think they did a couple of Kwame Alexander books last year, The Hate You Give. Um, and he tries to choose books that, that possibly his kids um, can see themselves in. And this is a, um, and he's a young guy, and I just loved his passion, but I loved his ideas. He had a lot of the students sort of, one of the kids said, well, why don't we have breakfast at this? So he's like, well, I don't have the money to buy breakfast, but do you think we can find a sponsor? And had kids going out and really taking charge of it. They created um, kind of like little free libraries, but out of old um, newspaper boxes. I thought that was so cool. Um, but the kids, they partnered with another school. They painted them. They put them out. Um, I can't remember if they're all on their campus or around there. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I loved meeting him when I walked in. He's like, hey, I know you. <laughs> um, but I loved hearing about him. Another breakout session was um, Elisa, Alicia Abdul from a high school in Albany, New York. And she talked about research and things like that but she also talked about checkology um and we heard i believe it was the founder or the director of checkology he spoke and you know i feel like i've been able to take a lot of what i learned at this and put it to use right away because i use that today with an eighth grade class so i i like that a lot of the things i could put to use right away with my kids I, I agree. I think that's one of the best things about this conference is you always leave with stuff that you can, you know, take right back and use with your students. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's, and, and you get to spend a lot of time talking with the other librarians. So you get, you pull ideas from them too. Like, how are you handling this situation? What are you doing? Because I'm the only librarian in my school. So you guys are my people, you know, uh, this is my PLN because I can't go and talk to another librarian and be like, hey, what do you think about this? They don't know that. So going to this conference is where I learn because this is where I get to, you know, talk to other people about things. So, I mean, I highly recommend people, if you're thinking about a conference, SLJ Leadership Summit is one of the best around. Um, it is free. There is no registration. You just got to pay for hotel and get yourself there. And it's like two days of learning that is incredibly good. Um, so we're going to end this because we've gone way over our half hour. But I think it's been such a great conversation. And thank you, too, for joining us for it. Um, and, you know, I'll leave you guys to say one final word. Stoney, you first. Well, um, I'm just so grateful to have had the opportunity to, you know, to get to go, and uh, I hope in the future I, that I get to attend again. Um, I like what what you said, um, Alyssa, about having a PLN um, and interacting with that PLN in, in a, a conference like this is one of those opportunities to. My goodness, um, to, to just be around folks uh, that are sitting, setting the trends uh, in the field. Um, just so many good things came out of it. And I'm just thankful that we got to go. And um, hopefully I can stay on track with the goals that I set more for, for myself after hearing, um, you know, so, so many good speakers. So it was wonderful. And I'll just reiterate what you said. Um, go to the summit. Uh, if, if you have an opportunity to do it, it's it's a wonderful opportunity to improve yourself for those that you serve. All right. Well, I'll piggyback on that and 
you know, basically say the same thing Stoney did. Um, I actually brought a friend of mine who we've been friends for 20 years, we realized, um, this week, this that past weekend. And um, but we went to library school together and she doesn't go to many national conferences. Um, I think probably the last national conference she went to, we went to AASL way back in the day, probably about 10 years ago, um, when it was in Charlotte. And um she was like, this was awesome. And she met so many people that I know that I'm friends with my PLN, my people. Um, so, but she also got to talk to, she's at a very small private school and she got to, she talked to some people that were in the same situation as her, which was really great. Um, and now I've heard rumors. We always hear rumors about where it's going to well, be. Where, Someone Does anyone have a rumor? Sometimes we hear. Someone said Atlanta. Yeah. which would be weird because it's kind of in the same area um of course that's my neck of the woods so that would be fabulous i wouldn't yeah. have to buy airfare because a big part of conferences for me is is finding the yeah. the yeah. funds to get there um so i'm not sure someone else mentioned virginia maybe i can't remember um but uh I, I, I told Kathy one time uh, from SLJ that Savannah would be a fabulous place and I would even help her plan it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. But um, I definitely think it is worth it. Like you said, it's free. Um, thank you to all the sponsors that yes. do sponsor it to make it that way. And, you know, I do think, especially if you're looking for something small, something to recharge yourself during the school year, because so many of our conferences are, in the summer yeah. this is a this is definitely a great thing and i've been wanting to go for years and so glad i finally made it yep thank you guys all for joining us um we are we have some really exciting webinars coming up in november i think there's gonna be a for those of you who are going to aasl which i am not um i think we might be doing an aasl recap webinar um and oh we have some big news there's going to be i'm gonna hint towards it but we have been uh sort of collaborating with every library and we're gonna have a series of webinars coming up on really talking about how to advocate librarians can advocate for themselves and for better funding and so how to advocate with the school boards and it to you know get them to realize the value and if you're just and what happens if your library gets, you know, your position, it might be on the cutting block. We're going to be doing a whole webinar series that's going to be really helpful to librarians on advocacy and trying to push the value of librarians. And we're going to be working with every library. So that's going to be starting. I think we're going to start it in December. But, you know, we have some really cool things coming up. So keep watching for the cool stuff that we have going on. and um apply let's see uh you can register for ISTE. isn't the conference registration opening up soon or it might already be open for ISTE uh the ISTE conference that's in chicago so i think possibly november might be november that it's coming out so i think i just saw that email yeah registration i think is opening up soon so you know early bird registration is a little bit money off so take advantage of it and come and see us in chicago uh, thanks, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks, guys.